yeah. keys, like a lot of really nice play. We are ready for the battleground selection of game number three. And again, it's a 2-0 lead right now. Looking at LFM, they've won on Tomb, they've won on BOE. Cursed Hollow is going to be the pick here for LFM in the third game of the series. I think that something crazy is going to happen. I okay. sense it. I sense the Raven Lord. Uh, something's going to happen here, man. Like, this is the map where you can pull out a little bit of that Gouda. You know, you can get some of that Swiss. Just keep the goat cheese on the side. Like, exactly. You know? No goat cheese. But you can do that on this map. Uh, all types. We've seen traditionally or historically yeah, some odd compositions on this map. And I have a feeling that XD might pull something out here. Uh, and they, they have to. They need some momentum. They need some tempo in this series because this is 2-0. And it's best of seven, so yes. that means you have to win four games. That's the math for you. Got you, got you on the last guys. By the way, and a cast your math. By the way, so anything can happen, right? We've seen the run back, you know, even from a 3-0 deficit, winning the four games in a row. And XD is a team that, you know, we honestly initially looked at them and said they are the best shot for open division. I don't know if that's true anymore. I they're 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 showing right now a a basically a fear. The jitters are getting to them. Right, as experienced as Tiger JK and Talking Trees and Hami and some of these players are, um, they're still not just going for the throat, right? They're not willing to just jump in there and take what is theirs. You know, it, obviously there, there's moments that feel very telegraphed when it's like, okay, we have 13, we can fight, and they don't want to, they don't want to jump the gun, but. Sometimes you just gotta. Yeah, I, I want to see it too. I really do because I feel like they have the comps so far that they've drafted where they can they can do that. You know, game number one, you had that huge wombo with the planet cracker, but we never really saw it. So we will see if those huge team fights are satisfied in this game number three. Cursed Hollow XD. They got their first pick. They got first ban, and again, likely going to spend some time on it. In the last game, we saw them ban out Hanzo in the first pick, first band situation, even though it's one of Talking Tree's absolute best heroes. Abathur has been taken away from LFM. I think that's very smart. Yeah, they, they uh, people are just removing, you know, that the cheese potential. But now the Dahaka is up and, and uh, Abathur is down. <laughs> There's no chance it's going to be first picked, obviously. But hmm. it's still just worth mentioning the fact that, you know, when Dahaka and Abathur are both available in the draft, then it's a little bit better. But if Abathur's off the table and you got Dahaka, you know, sometimes you can respond with the false stat and stuff like that, but it's a good pickup. Maev banned out for LFM. What is this first pick? XD, do they stick with their guns? Do they, you know, do they go? We've seen a lot of Malfurion's first pick. You know, it could yeah. be a Garrosh. A Hanzo is a strong hero. I don't for the think team. we'll Medivh. see them play Medivh again like that. It, it didn't work out for them. I, I feel like I, I almost want them to not play it yeah. at this point. Um, so I want to put the spotlight on Tiger JK. Tiger JK is is the newly crowned tank of the team. They've had about a month-ish to prepare since the Open Division playoffs concluded, and he has been in the scene for forever, right? He's been playing, he was a sport player, he's been in the flags, he's been everything. When we're looking at his warrior, we've only seen him play the OG Warriors. We've seen him play ETC, and we've seen him play Muradin. Are they willing to play the Garrosh? What does his warrior pool look like? Yes, thank you. I want it, because this is a mix up. Yeah. Their, their approach, he's an aggressive player. Garrosh commands a forward position so much better than most heroes in the game. And I think seeing Tiger play Garrosh just makes sense. And if you're not getting picks with Garrosh, he's a dead pick. So right. you have to be finding those, which means you have to be looking for them. And I absolutely agree. You need a hero and a style of comp that can really push yourself forward in momentum here. And I think Garrosh is the absolute best answer. The response from LFM, though, is <laughs> it's pretty scary. You got Malfurion, you got Hanzo, but give me the Phoenix. Let's go taunt and Planet Cracker. Mm -hmm. Let's do something, some, you know, maybe something that LFM's not as used to playing against, but I guess Phoenix and Hanzo, they match, or Hanzo matches up well against the Phoenix. Yeah, you're still getting, there we Ooh, go. Wow, they Speaking. didn't pick up the Stu Call. They, they're sticking to their guns with the Medivh. They're getting their global and their solo lane in the Dahaka. I'm actually quite surprised with the Medivh over Stukov myself. Yeah, me too. Just because just the silence and, and Garrosh alone can, I mean, that kills Hanzo, that kills Malfurion, it kills so many heroes yeah. if you can get that silence out. And to me, it wasn't just, I don't think I'm going to blame cover uh, for the Medivh. I, I really don't think that's the reasonable way of doing this. I really just feel like XD hasn't shown me, yes, they know how to play with the Medivh. Right. You know, I saw some, some you know, the portal plays just weren't happening. Sometimes the Force of Wills weren't in the right place or, or used a little bit preemptively. Uh, we'll see if they can clean it up in this one. And they've got Garrosh, so uh, you can make some pretty sweet plays with the Garrosh and Medivh. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll find out. 
the green man gets banned. I mean, Cover is a very talented assassin in general. Yep. Like range carry, we see him do a lot of work, and Medivh can fit that bill. Um, but yeah, that last game, we'll, we'll, we'll swipe, put it under the rug, exactly. you know, sweep yeah. it under the rug, and yeah. we'll give him another shot here and see I what agree. he can do. But Grey Main, I do like that ban. Harmonizes well with the Medivh. What is it? What's it going to be likely? I don't know. I actually say get rid of Blaze under these circumstances. You have the Malfurion and Hanzo. What, what else could it be? Let's think power picks. A Genji has been, you know, absolutely terrifying, but you got the Hanzo, you know, the double Shimada isn't something you see too often. Tassadar could also be a likely ban for, mm -hmm. and it is Genji. So they're yeah. just like, you know, we, we are not giving you this weeb. You may have the other one, but this one is not allowed. Draded was just like at 110% that last game yep. playing the Genji, uh, putting the pressure on. So cool. I like the ban, it's very smart. Next two picks will go to the side of LFM. In terms of warriors, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of options here. You go for the Murden. The Blaze you mentioned is a really strong pick for the solo lane and the off warrior. Um, solo Blaze, not too popular nowadays, but. So ETC can be introduced into this mix up as a pseudo global, or not even pseudo, full global mm -hmm. level 10. You could run something like an ETC Tyrael, get a little bit fancy. So Tyrael is your main warrior. You have the sanctification for the, the Hanzo, and then you will have the global at level 10. Likely, I think we can see something like that coming mm -hmm. in, or LFM are just like, no, nah, we're fine uh, with a you know standard warrior, and we will run a false stat instead. Or they could just run full team comp and not care about uh, the Dahaka, but there we're seeing the ETC and the Leeming. The Leeming looked fantastic let's be honest it looked real good it, it is i mean it was fantastic the the resets were there it doesn't have the harmony with the genji but you have the other shimada brother here of hanzo that burst poke damage that they have that they can apply when it comes to just sitting around the tributes it's going to be relentless between moonfires and, and hanzo and Li Ming non-stop but it could suffer from big medif shields that's true yep it has that potential definitely this last pick is a, is a big question mark for me. I would like to know what it is. Obviously, we will find out very soon, but XD now. You've got Medivh, you've got Garrosh, uh, Greymane is banned, Genji is banned. What is your hyper carry? Is it Phoenix? Phoenix versus Li Ming, though. Yeah. I mean, that's tough. I know, and against Hanzo. It's, it's an awful matchup for yeah. him. And it's almost like, do you consider Cassia now? Also struggles against Li Ming. It's tough mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the, the ranged assassin, assassins that you may want to rock here. Vala Likely is Stukov too, basically though. extinct nowadays. Yeah, Stukov seems like a lot. I don't want to see the Regar again. Jaina. Okay, they go Jaina. Okay, so the solo damage dealer, if you just want to you know, consider Jaina that. Medivh obviously does a lot of damage. The same with Dahaka. Um, okay, that's, that's an interesting pickup for sure. What's the last it's one? not the standard harmonies you see, but when you just consider, you know, Jaina slowing and then Dahaka getting a confirmed drag from that slow, or Garrosh getting a confirmed combo from that slow, they don't have cleanse. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Mal Malfurion does have the, the cleanse, but it's not necessarily as consistent. It's situational. You, make sure you have to make sure you have the Q applied, and it's yep. not going to work in every scenario. That is true. LFM, what is their choice? There's actually a wealth of heroes that could come in here. Um, you could see basically any solo laner like there could be a, a echo of elements thrall here you could have True. a Tyrael, as i said you can have what do you got yeah a Tyrael, i feel like it would look pretty good but i'm not sure if that's what was going to come in here I feel like uh, Malfail blaze, could though. work yeah blaze could work i think blaze is the safest yeah it just they, they just played it yes oh, they are doing the Tyrael. yes <laughs> this is such a sick comp lfm they 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 think like me i don't know well, if that's, that's a good thing or a bad no, that's thing scary but. dude if they're thinking like you if they're <laughs> drafting like you would draft if you guys didn't know, we coach his I, tempo store. I, coach. I really like that. Yeah. It, it makes so much sense. Uh, the Jaina, big combinations. Maybe she's water elemental. We'll have to find out. Uh. But they have all the tools. I love this draft. They have everything they could possibly want in, these, in, in this game. All right. So you already just said who you like better. LFM, what's the ratio? Is it 65-30 like last game? That I was your true answer. I don't like the ratios anymore. No, <laughs> I, I, need, like I, I need a ratio. Yeah, let, let's, let's go with 65. I'm gonna say 70-30 for LFM. This Ooh. is scary. I wasn't impressed by the Medivh play. I swept it under the rug, but I'm still I'm still hesitant. Okay. But I I'm excited to see early aggression, right? Uh, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna retract that. I'm gonna say this is 60-40 because uh, favoring LFM because when it comes to Tiger, he wants to just walk up to you and force the fight. Yeah. Right. That's what he wants to do on this garage. But Jaina's gonna help that happen. If they can get those early picks and some of these heroes, obviously it's gonna be hard to kill a Tyrael, um, but that's what they need to do. I agree. Uh, killing Tyrael will be uh, difficult. I, 
you know, LFM, I want to see how they play their camps. I want to see what they do with their bruisers, how they do mm. their siege. Siege is probably going to be quite standard, but right. do they pick up their bruiser camp before the first objective? Something they can certainly do. The Justice for All is so good at pushing that in and getting yourself a little bit of an experience lead because you can shield your minions for a substantial amount and be able to push in like that. Um, so do, is this how they're going to utilize the Tyrael pick? But I can't wait to see the big sanctifications. That's the, that's the one for me. Let's get going into game number three here on Cursed Hollow. We have LFM from the Pro League defending their spot up 2-0. And let's introduce their team. Figgy's on Tyrael. We have the Aware playing Malfurion. It's going to be Swabs rocking that ETC. Draded coming back from the Dark Nexus onto Hanzo. Figgy It's going to be in there on the Tyrael. And yep, specialty. Rounding up the team on Leeming once again. We got the right in red is XD. We've got Nintori. He's playing the Stukov. We got Talking Trees. He's on the Jaina. We got Hami coming in with the beautiful Dahaka pick. Tiger JK. He's on the Garrosh, that main warrior. Rounding off the draft is cover again on this Mediv. Can he prove himself on this hero? I think so. I think so. I think so. And you know, while we're loading in, and this series is young, I just want to give a big special shout out to everyone who has followed the Open Division throughout the series, yeah. cheered on these teams, because there's so much new talent and new blood entering the scene of Heroes of the Storm. And it's fantastic to see uh, the opportunities, you know, like Heroes Hearth, that's my favorite yeah. thing in the world. Seeing a team go from amateur with new players like Ishbu and BBJ and climbing all the way to the midseason brawl, it makes me the happiest nerd in the world. And that could happen again with the teams we have competing this weekend. It's the dream story, and Her Heroes Hearth is one of those teams that has just shown that hard work and dedication can truly pay off. Biggie, you know, gets tossed into silence, but this is the difficulties, you know, killing yeah. Tyrael is not easy. It was an ambitious attempt anyways. Yeah. They're on the wall, right? They're just trying to prove a point, I guess. But they are also, you know, losing this bottom lane with a two-man push. T's going to have the reduced cooldowns with those innervates coming through, helping keep that mana up. Uh, did not opt to go for Power Hungry at level one, so it's not going to be as much sustain. However, it will keep the pressure on. XD taking a little bit of damage bottom side. Both of these uh, teams likely going to pick up their siege camps now. Draded hovering, but they don't have the uh, the watchtower here, so Draded has to be cautious of an invade, and here we go. Medivh scouting up, and Draded knows it. He has to be very careful here. And you know what? He obviously gave the information that he was there because the health bars were not at 100%, so this is something that they know, but they're just going to be happy in knowing they succeeded in stealing that. Losing two towers in the bottom lane, the experience right now does speak for itself, but that will be relieved a little bit as they missed, what, three minions here in this top lane. They're going to grab a few more. I think that that invasion, unless you find a kill, is a difficult one to, to pull off, unless... The tower? Okay, that helps, that that helps a lot. Help. Okay, yeah, that helps so much, actually. If XD are able to pick up their siege camp and have Dahaka bottom, because the first objective is topside, that is a huge moment for them. Uh, the Dahaka constantly pushing with the siege bot, like, XD can take out another wall with this play. But at least, right now, they're playing ambitiously. They're fighting, they're finding things on the map that they... We just didn't see this XD for the past couple games. I know. And, you know, we're already just seeing uh, Tiger just literally, as Garrosh, you can just say, I'm going to walk at you. Yeah, that's my job in this fight, walking <laughs> at you. And that's all you have to do is Garrosh because he's such a scary hero if you get picked. Uh, but we do have that first freebie, 20 seconds till it's up. So we should see someone trying to grab the giant camp at the bottom lane if they want to min-max that Dahaka potential. Yeah, I really wanted to see XD get that, but they're not going to have the time to do it. So. Even though they have the global pushing bottom, it would have been much stronger with the siege camp, mm -hmm. uh, you know, bolstering the efforts of Dahaka. But right now, the big thing for me is, you know, XD kind of want this to stall out because they have the global, but they also want to get uh, stacks for cover. Uh, but at the same time, stacks for Hanzo can also happen. But the big thing here, how effective is the brush stalker? Well, right now, that's one wave of experience in favor, and you see the XP now. Uh, has taken a bit of a lead here for XD. Tiger JK stepping forward, gets the Q, doesn't quite have the toss. You're not going to want to waste that on a hero like Tyrael. But a good dispersion as they step away. The armor from Garrosh making it very difficult to poke down like that. Okay. The aware trying to channel but not able to get it. Talking Trees taking Where'd a bit of damage as well. The Brush Hawker's got to be here when that next wave goes down. They have the 7 advantage Ooh. just about here online. One more minion will go down. Garrosh stepping forward, Dahaka on the backside. Could get the drag in to force and pull him back into the silence of Stukov, which is just patiently awaiting a victim, but no one has been found. Draded applying so much damage on that Hanzo from the bottom right side. 
Trade is positioning has been fantastic, but the toss onto Swabs, he's in a lot of trouble. Also taking fort damage, but he's gonna Ooh. be able to walk away from this one. No, he's definitely dead here. So kill going over to XD, bit of tempo, and another one onto Hanzo. So perfect positioning from the Hanzo throughout most of that fight, but just getting caught out there. And XD, ladies and gentlemen, pulling the trigger like we said they needed to, finding these two kills, and just that they're now up almost a full level in experience. And you know, it, it's great to see these players just playing properly, not being anxious with the drag. Some of the earlier games that looked like Stormbolts were just like desperate, like throw it, please hit. Yeah. The drag was held. They expected, you know, the the Eldruins might, they expected whatever, just making sure they have those tools as a threat, yeah. not just an ability you cast, but a resource that is on the table. Very true. Both of these teams now picking up their bruiser camps, so mid going to be a point of contest here, Tribute spawning, and that is defensive spawning bottom side for LFM. So there's the potential that Dahaka just, you know, concedes this one, stays top, pushes top a little bit, takes that well, maybe some fort damage, but this is one that can certainly go in the favor of LFM. Let's see what happens mid lane when it comes to these bruisers. Yeah, naturally the whole Jaina combo is mitigated quite a bit by the Night Camp when it steps forward like that. We can see a tower go down already. Um, and this will be a favorable camp when it comes to the side of LFM, considering yeah. the posture. But Hami has a free top lane, has that uh, brush talker whenever he pleases. Tiger finds a nice cue. Yeah, that actually is a lot, because stalling that even just a couple of times just benefits XD immensely, because top is being pushed. Cover with the second stall, so nice job by XD. They have to make sure that they don't overcommit here. They have the Force of Wills from cover. It's going to be coming in likely very soon. There it is, but be aware, now starting his channel. So that'll be, that'll be the end of this. I mean, they're mm -hmm. gonna get the channel, they've evacuated. Um, a good stall, giving Hami a ton of pressure in the top lane. And I just, again, we have to talk about Medivh. He's at 20 with the Master's Touch. I'm glad to see just safe posturing after that one interrupt that he got with the Q. Yeah, if he can stay alive uh, throughout the first team fight that really erupts in this game, then we're going to be seeing a, a pretty substantial power spike Decently uh, early here for XD. Tiger stepping up, but he has the Force of Wills from cover if anything bad happens. And you're you know, in a 1v1 against Tyrael. Nothing you know, worth mentioning. Mm -hmm. Next tribute, top defensive side for XD, and they have level 10s. So very easy for them to pick up. So it's top defensive, as, as you mentioned. Uh, Dahaka not quite in position to get that global soak in the bottom, but yeah, they're starting this camp really quickly. Medivh scouting out. Draded throws the arrow. This gives them the intel, but they have level 10. Do they commit to it? Brush Talker, he's, Dahaka's currently working on the giant camp. The top lane can Brush Talker at will. Oh, man. This is scary. LFM starting to position in. They don't have level 10s here, ladies and gentlemen. The Brush Talker can come in. Look at Tiger JK's health. He's so low. Where, there's the Brush Talker coming through. Tiger it lands a nice combo. Hami wants to get in on the point. Tiger get in the queue. Big damage on the swap. Look, go get the silence comes through, and they find the portal to get in on and get the boss. A huge confirm. The root attempts to keep Hami away, but he's looking for the drag. Oh, Aldruins is there. He's getting the speed from the bush, but not quite enough. The aware is actually in a little bit of trouble. The ley line comes through, and they're going to be looking at picking That's up another Malfurian. kill. Yep, the drag to land on Malf, and he is so caught up. The Jaina damage, and now Tribute going to go over to XD. They pick up the enemy boss. Siege is pushing bottom, likely going to focus on their own boss off of this play, because 15 second death timer is still there for Malfurion. There's no reasonable way that LFM can come and contest this, and XD doing exactly what they need to find some life in this series. We're seeing aggressive play. They stayed on that boss. They knew they could wait and wait and wait for the brush talker to be like a pincer assault. Yep. And they utilized the friendly toss to like control that space and the portal yep. beautifully. It's like they, they thought in the future, they planned it all out, and they executed in a wonderful way. And Hami's zoning them away. They should not be able to contest this boss with no ETC. Stage dive is here, but I don't think we'll see it. Now we get to see XD playing from you know, having a lot of uh, map pressure at this point. We haven't got, got to see them in this situation yet, playing from ahead. So I'm excited to see what XD do to try to close uh, this game further and further in their advantage, but. Looking looking at this boss situation, what would you do? The fort's almost dead. There's only one tower on the keep. Do you escort the way they are? Oh, they are looking for yeah, Uva Force look. was clean there with the water alley. Looking to get the aware. They find the toss on Tyrael. Druin's might not gonna be able to go out with the silence down. Cleanse has been cast. Stage dive in from ETC. The stun from the boss helping out a little bit. Nintori gets popped by T. T looking for another kill on Tiger JK, but the portal has been dropped. They have to retreat from here. Figgy is low, but that's gonna be a good defense here for the side of LFM. XD had 
a good opportunity to find a fight on or a pick onto Malfurion there, but the Twilight Dream just, or sorry, the uh, the Tranquility just gave him enough sustain to survive that one. Uh, the biggest problem there was XD willing to fight in a five v four without um, their level thirteens. Mm. So Dehaka stayed mid while the stage dive came onto the backside. So you know LFM they get the five v four and that was a little bit of misplay by XD, but still. You know, worth mentioning, they have their 13s, their opponents sitting at 11 and a half about, uh, and next tribute, bottom side, and it's neutral. Yeah, I, I will say that the one thing that they have been doing consistently very well is knowing exactly when to leave outside of that one time in BOE when they had no mana. Mm. They just cut their losses, backed away. The experience lead is still huge. They still have good control of the map, and this is curse point for both teams. With the 13 advantage, this curse could be monster for them. Yeah, and of course the power spike coming through uh, for Jaina, you know, her level 13, icy, icy veins, yeah. just so much burst potential from this hero. Definitely worth mentioning here, XD, they have these tools. If they can get the taunt plus uh, that, that cooldown from Jaina, they can blow up a target, but the Tyrael, does the Sanctification save everyone on LFM? And here we go, Tributes going over to XD for free, of course, the level 13's there. What can XD do to just snowball themselves in terms of structures? Well, they're going to utilize it to hack on the bottom lane. ETC is getting free reign in top with the help of the Siege Giants to help keep that top lane from pushing in, which is big because that's the weakest of the lanes. However, Keep Wall could take a lot of damage from that Dahaka push, and that's a ton of XP. And right now, the name of the game is catch up for LFM, and this is certainly not going to help out. No, 13's very close here for LFM. Uh, 35 seconds left on the curse timer. But the big point here is the fact that LFM aren't going down anything crazy. Yes, they're losing some forts, uh, but they're not getting picked. Oh. Tiger looking, though, <laughs> and the excellent uh, the wave of force to stop the engagement there. Stage dive Stage coming dive. in with the holy ground of Tyrael, but Garrosh controlling that space. Tiger stepping back taunt. in, looking for the taunt, but the damage is there. Tranquility and Ice Block have been used through the aware to try to get back to safety, and it's looking good here. Jaina just blew her cooldowns, so no big damage left Swaps. for her, but the body blocks there from Hami, finding the kill on Swab's Magoo. Stepping back in, Tranquility has expired. The drag pulling in Drayna, but the cleanse is good, and it gets the D away, even with the isolation applied just a second too late. We do see this wall going down. That should be the end of it. Yeah, Sanctification also a little bit late there, could have very Whoa! well saved. The Aware now gets caught out, and Tiger JK finding these picks for his team. XD, this is a different version of this team, and I'm so excited to see this fast-paced nature of gameplay from this roster. Middle Keep is the focus of XD. Masters touch at 30 stacks as they look to siege up here. Leaming combo throw now, and they're gonna just play it safe and back away for some HP. Giants will expire in the top, but they still have control of mid and bottom, and they're looking to confirm the keep. Five seconds before we have that Malfurion back online. Should be enough time to seal the deal. Tigers just buying space. It's funny. I was going to say, you know, LFM didn't lose too much off of this curse because XD didn't find picks. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we saw a portal over the wall. Fight started. Sanctification came out a little bit late from LFM, so Swabs ends up going down. Uh, Sanctification just follows up right after the ETC dies. And then XD, they get another kill onto uh, Malfurion and then push in, get a keep. So XD got so much off of that uh, curse. The other thing that's really interesting is the oh, the toss in. They find Malfurion once again. Again, Arrow just too late. Stage dive in onto three, but the water elemental was primed and ready as Leyline Seal is locking away Tyrael, but it's not enough for the lockdown. Drag attempted and whips, but the break the over the root from the Cone of Cold will find ETC. And now XD with the 16 immediately will be on the enemy boss bottom side, which is going to go on an exposed keep, I believe, uh, almost. Uh, so the wall has taken some beating here, but look at the experience advantage for XD. And Jake, this is exactly what I wanted XD to be doing. These portals, those taunts, that's exactly how you have to play the style of comp, and they're doing it, and it's so fantastic to Holly see. Holly has no concern for his opponents Portal. as he's stepping in, gets him a portal home, Tiger JK, he's getting poked to oblivion. The Holy Ruins in the Holy Ground going in. Hami is low, but the taunt buys the space. They need to keep him alive for a little bit longer and pick up the boss, but they lose both warriors trading for Tyrael. Favorable trade for the LFM when it comes to that, but the boss was succeeded. Oh man, if Dahaka weren't in the lane and he was doing damage to the boss the entire time, I don't think that the Tyrael would have went in there and no members of XD would have went down, so you know, of course, hindsight is 2020 20 always, but XD not getting as much out of that situation as they could have. Do you think it was over eager for Hami to walk out and take all that damage the way he did? Um, 
No, I think if you're in XD's situation right there, I actually think that what he was doing is pretty good. He took a lot of his health, though, and required the portal, but he didn't have to do that. That's the thing. You know, right. it, and it's tough to say that, oh, no, the little bit of damage from Dahaka would have gotten us this uh, boss before Tyrael shows up with the Holy Ground. But yeah, it, like I said, it was kind of just like a hindsight thing. But yeah, lost a little bit more than they needed to uh, from that play. Well, we do see, you know, a game somewhat in control here by the side of XD, but the experience gap has been cleaned up quite a bit with that fight on the boss, getting the favorable kill count there, and the talent tiers have been evened up. Uh, LFM, honestly, when they're playing defensive, they look fantastic, but the few times they've flipped the switch and tried to force the fight with stage dive, it actually looks dicey for them, and Suave Magoo gets taunted, Blizzard combo, and the toss-up doing a lot of damage with the silence being applied, but it's not quite enough. Yes, yeah, pretty ambitious, but Ooh. the, the uh, isolation on the back side and the drag as well, but the counter arrow is there to stop the advance. Swab's in a lot of trouble, but he's able to okay. uh, kill oh, away to Mount safety. Oh, Malfurion gets tossed into the fray. Ice block is clean. Stage dive actually going into the lane lane. Still saves Malfurion for a moment, but it's not enough. Master's Dutch doing a lot of damage there. Over the wall from cover, dropping a portal, Swab's. looking for the kill onto the cow. He Material considers going in with that Aldruin Spite, but says, no, it's not worth it. This yes. could be it. Master Touch completed with that kill. Look at Midwave. So much pressure here from XD. Yes, you have a Hanzo and a Li Ming, but I think if XD, they find the portal. There's the jump. Draden has nowhere to go at this point, but the members of XD just focusing on the core, and I think they can do this as long as they play it properly. But look at T just on the backside, killing those cat is Draden. The taunt. Oh, Hanzo is in a bad spot. He goes down in XD. Flipping the aggression switch here in game number three is looking to close out Curse Hollow. They're just tearing through the core the best they can. Mintori's being focused, but I don't think it matters. There's another catapult primed and ready. Yes, Stukov goes down. 20% left on the core. Trees gets the shield from Medivh, and that's, that's enough damage. GG. XD picking up their first game in this series, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. And they deserve this one. You know, they played it aggressively from the very beginning. They got those portals. They got the Garrosh combos. That's that's how they have to play. They have to play uh, so that they can generate tempo, generate momentum in these games. And that's just that just bought them the ticket here in this series. That was a huge game for them. From the beginning, they showed the willingness to portal over the wall yep. and look for the plays. And that is not something we saw once in the game prior with Medivh. Purely defensive. Yep. And that mentality switch, they found it. I'm happy. And I would say that the, the combo of uh, Garrosh and solo damage dealer Jaina is harder to execute than like a Greymane. You know, Greymane can basically right. just jump on anyone at any point and you don't have to, as Greymane, decide, hmm, am I going to spend my spells on the wave or am I going to spend it on the follow-up? Uh, so I think that the style of execution of this Garrosh comp was even harder than before, but XD, they flipped the switch and they're here. But can they prove consistency? That's a big question. In a best of seven, consistency is pretty darn important. I mean, we're only three games in, potential of seven games. Naturally, we, we've we seen these teams go back and forth a little bit now, but once you get some momentum in your sails, like, yes, we can do this, mm -hmm. right? And that's what it felt like in that game. Uh, Master's Touch, you know, again, it didn't, it didn't complete till the end of the game, but it was still really good Medivh play. It had a strong impact, it had the control, it had the engages, and also, like, did, did Jaina die once? Let's have a peer no, here. No, Jaina nope. didn't die once, right? So that's saying something. They had so much control. They were very good with using the Dahaka. They they drafted that uh, you know perfectly in that game. And I, what did you think of the, the stage dives? I thought the stage dives were really good. Um, I. Uh, for the some most, of them. Yeah, some of them were good. I liked the top one, but I would actually kind of attribute that to XD not willing to spend their Brush Stalker to match it, because if that did show, did show up, we don't know how that team fight would have right. you know, evolved. But um, it didn't get as much value as you would expect. And I feel like just the synergy from LF... This is a hard draft to execute. It is. It the, is. the sanctification with the ETC, it's not easy. And that's, you know, when I, when I see an HTC team, I expect that they can, you know, perform quite well with this style of draft. And I wouldn't say that, you know, it's 100% their fault for not being able to execute it properly. XD just, they played really, really aggressively and that kind of caught them off guard, it seemed like. But there was times, and it's definitely huge, where the Sanct was just a little bit late.
mm -hmm. and then that resulted in kills. And, but it's a, it's a kill while you're cursed. And then, the, you know, the follow-up portal, and then they get another kill, and it's like, no, this well, sanctification would have stopped everything. You know, what to me, what seemed crazy is, like, yeah, that one moment was all their aggression. They decided to stage dive in on the fight with the holy ground because they knew they had that sanctification. Yes. And in that moment, the curse that looked like it was going to be defended almost flawlessly became a big problem because, again, Saint didn't save ETC. ETC died. Then they have the forward position, portal over the wall, kill Malfurion. Then you get a keep. And suddenly the game is firmly in their hands. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's Garrosh, you know, he's not easy to kill. I actually yeah. thought the Holy Ground was fantastic. It was in a choke point. Uh, the, the scatter arrows could have uh, done a lot of damage to him there, but yeah, he was able to survive, and I think he landed a four-person taunt in that situation. Like, just big plays from XD, and this is the XD that we kind of expected to see moving in. Yes. This really aggressive, you know, just coming out of the gates, looking for picks, looking for aggro plays. Especially when we there saw we that go. Tiger was going to be their new tank. It's like, yeah. all right, this team's going to be just like, let's go, 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 let's fight. And you know what? Let's go, go, go and figure out what the next map's going to be in this series. Bum, bum, bum. Volskaya Foundry.